right, so we're going to start lying down. And you don't need any props nearby, but um, like I said before, we are going to be using probably all of the props today. So just have them nearby, but not, not, not immediately accessible. So you're going to lie down with your knees bent and the soles of your feet down on your yoga mat. Take your arms down by your sides. Feel the floor, feel the earth underneath you. Lift your pelvis up away from the floor to extend and elongate your tailbone. And then slowly release your pelvis all the way back down, keeping a little bit of length to your tailbone. And then take a nice full deep breath into your body and imagine you're pouring that breath all the way down into the bowl of your pelvis and feeling that breath expand three-dimensionally to the sides of the waist and up to the front and the back of the chest. So you feel that breath even opening up into your shoulder blades. And then open your mouth and sigh that breath out. Deep release. And let's do that a couple of more times. So pour that breath all the way into the bowl of your pelvis. Allow your breath to like circulate all the way through your torso. And then open your mouth and sigh that breath out and think about what it is you might be releasing, any tension that you may have been holding, any residual tension, even if you thought you let it all go. And then let's do that one more time. Deep inhale and really Feel where your breath is moving in your body. Feel that sense of expansion and spaciousness. Feel that sense of fullness. And then open your mouth and sigh that breath out. And then open your arms out to the sides with your palms facing up as if you were just expanding the width of your chest. Take a big inhale, and as you exhale, hug your right arm on top of your left arm. Just give yourself a hug across your chest. And then feel yourself breathing. Feel that expansion underneath your hands as you breathe. Think about if every single pore in your body could breathe in and out. Good. And then on your next inhale breath, allow your arms to open up and you can cactus your arms, you can splay them out to the side, you can, you can place them down by your sides, by your hips a little bit more. Just find a place where it feels like there's a sense of openness. And there's a movement of the breath out into the expansion of your arms. And then on your next inhale breath, Feel that expansion through all of your fingertips. Stretch and get long. And again, as you exhale, give yourself another hug with your left arm on top of your right and feel yourself breathing into your hands. So we're starting to turn on that ujjayi pride pranayama now, feeling that whisper across the back of the throat. The feeling as if every pore in your body could breathe. And then on your next inhale breath, again, open up your arms and feel that sense of widening, that sense of taking up more space, more potentiality. And just imagine you could breathe that width, that spaciousness, from the left side to the right side and from the right side to the left side. And as you do that, contemplate where you are physically in your room. Mark where your body is and mark the distance from where you are to the left side wall. And also mark the distance to the right side wall, just so that you become grounded in this space. Also mark the space from you to the wall in front of you and from you to the wall behind you. And then slowly start to let your right knee drop off towards the right so you just know where you are in space until it drags your pelvis along with it. So now both knees are twisting towards the right and you're still feeling that sense of expansion across your chest. Your whole body is breathing. Inhale back to center. And then as you exhale, let your left 
thigh get really heavy. Let your left knee drop out towards the left until it pulls your pelvis over into the twist. And just letting things be really gentle, but focusing on that expansion of your chest. Good, and then on your next inhale breath, we'll bring your knees back up to center. And now move to the, to the tempo of your breath. So as you exhale, let your right knee drop to the right and let you, eventually it takes the left with it. Inhale back to the center. And as you exhale, go towards the left. And just observe the sequencing of leading with the one side that you're going towards. Continue to the tempo of your own breath. Let's go two more times. And remembering for today's practice that we always want to coat the movement with the breath. So the inhale precedes the movement and the exhale is after the movement completes, or, or the end of the inhale, I mean, is after. Let me say that in a different way. Hug your knees in towards your chest. Let me see if I can make sense. So you begin the inhale and you move through the duration of the inhale and when you're done moving, there's still a little bit more space to inhale is what I'm trying to say. And the same thing with the exhale. But we'll talk about it a little bit more when we get into more movement. So hug your knees into your chest, start to rock up and down the length of your spine. If you wanna do it a couple of times, give yourself a massage, go for it. Eventually you rock yourself all the way up into a seated position and this might be when you want your blanket. So I am going to sit up on my blanket. And since part of our inquiry for today is what are we willing to look inward and explore? And maybe release, but maybe not release. But let's let out all of our stale energy around it. So we're gonna take Kapalabhati, Breath of Fire, just for about a minute or so to clear out any of the stale air. And if it doesn't work in your body, you just take a slow, steady breathing instead. But it's a forceful exhale. You feel your belly muscles draw in. It's like you're striking a match. So go ahead and let's begin one minute of Kapalapati. If it's helpful, you can place your hand on your belly and feel that striking action. Your belly muscles draw in every single time you forcefully expel that breath out. about 10 more seconds. Good, exhale all the air out. Release your arms and as you inhale, scoop everything up. Feel the sides of your waist get long, relax your inner upper shoulders. Allow your palms to join up above you and think about that quality you're offering up to the world. And as you exhale, just bring your hands together in front of your heart and connect the two. Connect what it is you're releasing or exploring internally and what it is that you are transmuting it to or alchemizing it into. And then release your hands and let's come onto hands and knees. So you can move your blanket aside. And as you come onto your hands and knees, obviously be mindful how you place your hands, how you place your knees down on the yoga mat. Take a few rounds of cat and cow and let's employ that principle we were talking about. So you begin inhaling and you let the movement follow. And when you're done finding cow pose, there's still a tiny bit more space to inhale. And then begin your exhale and start to move through cat pose. And when it feels like your body can't go any further, there's still a little bit more breath to exhale out. Continue to move like this, coating the entire movement with your breath. Close your eyes and feel it from the inside out as if your entire body is breathing. 
Feel it's rooting down into the floor, so make a little bit more contact with the tops of your feet and your shins. And then listen to that internal voice, listen to that inner teacher, and ask yourself what you might need. Maybe you continue with this, maybe you drop your hips back into a child's pose, maybe you stretch your wrists a little bit, maybe you make big circles with your hips. There's so many choices. But tune into that inner wisdom and make a choice that makes sense to your body. And so much about this practice is about learning to trust that inner wisdom, learning to trust that inner voice. And then once you feel nice and open, we're going to come into a position of stability and strength. So press down through your inner palms. Imagine a current of energy traveling up the inseams of your arms. And imagine that you could revolve the eyes of your biceps to face forward. Zip up from your pubic bone to your navel so your tailbone gets nice and long. And as you think about the length of your tailbone, think about extending energy straight out through the crown of your head. Extend your right leg straight back behind you. Place your toes down on the yoga mat. Revolve your right inner thigh up towards the ceiling more than you think you can. And then take your left hand and walk your left fingertips forward. So your left fingertips are like on a cupcake, so just the fingertips down on the floor. And then in this orientation, from the inner thigh, float your right leg heel to the height of your sitting bone, drawing the lowest part of your belly in. And then stretch the left arm forward as if you were to shake someone's hand. And so I want to work two aspects here while we're here. I want you to plug your left arm bone into your shoulder socket, and I want you to plug your right thigh bone into your hip socket. But I also want you to try to get longer without losing the plugging in of your joint. So can you extend infinitely as if you could keep reaching forward from the stability of your shoulder, and somewhere in the middle, you're going to find that length. So the goal here is to lengthen our spine. So you imagine that you're that stretching is creating space between all of the vertebrae of your spine. Get a little lighter on your right hand, press down into the top of your left foot a little bit more, and then release your limbs back down to the floor. And if you'd like to take a round of cat and cow just to reset things, remembering to coat the movement with your breath, go ahead and do that, and then refine that engaged and stable position. Extend your left leg back behind you, toes down on the yoga mat. And this gives us the opportunity to be mindful, to make sure that we're rotating that left inner thigh up. It's almost like your pinky toes are down on your mat. Then walk your right fingertips forward so you feel like you already have that idea of lengthening. Plug your right arm bone into the socket, plug your left thigh bone into the hip socket, and then float your left heel up. Draw the lowest part of your belly in, and then reach your right arm forward. So if your arm was really attached to your torso and your leg was really attached to your pelvis, but your body was stretching and elongating, you would be finding more and more space through the vertebrae of your spine while you support your back body with your front body. Keep breathing. Lift up out of your left hand. Take one more inhale. And as you exhale, again, return your limbs back down to the floor. Take your hands about three inches forward. Take care of your body. So if you know you have tighter shoulders, angle your index fingers towards the front corners of your yoga mat. And tuck your toes under and slowly find your way into downward facing dog. So every time we come into downward facing dog, it's a little bit different. We notice sensations. We start with what we feel on the floor. So can you anchor down into the fleshy part between your thumb and your first finger and imagine energy lifting up from the earth. Firm the triceps and revolve the biceps up. Allow the top of your skull to release so that your ears are in line with your arms. And then do whatever you need to do. Shift your weight a little bit from side to side. Maybe bend your knees. See if you can get those hips to lift up a little bit higher. And then press the front of your thigh bones towards the back of your thigh bones. And gently start to engage your belly muscles so that you're sealing the space between your front ribs and your pelvis. 
And then make your arms grow longer and try to stand a little bit more into your legs. On your inhale breath, shift forward to the top of the push-up. Stack the shoulders on top of the wrists. Imagine you had superpowers and you were shooting your superpowers down into the earth. Firm the triceps in. Make sure you're not dropping your head down. Elongate through the top of your skull. At the same time, press your heels back against an imaginary wall behind you. And now let's cope the movement with our breath. So take a big inhale. Begin your exhale and start to lengthen the hips up and back into downward facing dog. You're still exhaling when you feel like you got there. Begin your inhale, start to shift forward to the top of a push-up. You're still inhaling just a little bit when your body arrives. Continue, exhale, lift your hips up and back into downward facing dog. Inhale, coat the entire movement with your breath. Let's do that one more time, moving mindfully, moving slowly, keeping our attention on the flow of our energy, the flow of our breath. Shift forward into plank pose one more time. Drop your knees to the floor. Then drop your chest and your chin down. And then imagine you could pull your yoga mat backwards, lengthen through your toes, lift up into a baby cobra. And then take a few breaths here. So imagine you could breathe underneath your collarbones. We send a little bit more breath to the upper limbs of the chest so we feel a little bit more expansive again in the chest. Pinky toenails pressing down into the yoga mat. Left and right side of the pubic bone anchoring down into the yoga mat. Good, take one more inhale. And as you exhale, let yourself roll down. As you inhale, coil your upper spine up again. Coat the movement with your breath. Begin your exhale, start to uncoil. Begin your inhale, start to coil your upper spine up. Maybe you take it a little bit further. Begin your exhale, roll it back down. Last time, wherever you want to end up, Maybe it's a kind of a little bit of a higher baby cobra, or maybe you take it all the way to upward facing dog. As you exhale, hips up and back, downward facing dog. Inhale your right leg straight back behind you as if there is that cable still attached to your inner thigh. Press your left heel down towards the floor. So just observe that. We're trying to maintain neutral here. Good, now turn your right toes out towards the right. So again, draw that line from where your toes are to your right wall. Measure the distance so you know where you are in the space. And then allow your body to open. Bend your knee. If you want to take circles, take circles. So that hip flexor open up. And then start to imagine that you could lean back as if you could touch your toe to the back of your skull. I know that's a little crazy. It's not going to happen, but just imagine you could. Good. And then start to neutralize it all back out. So plug that left heel down. Revolve your right inner thigh up towards the ceiling. Keep stretching your yoga mat towards the front of the room. Big inhale. Begin your exhale. Start to shift forward. Curl your knee in towards your chest. Still a little bit of an exhale when you get there and step your foot between your hands. Drop your back knee down and start to already scissor your legs together. So the right heel is trying to pull backwards. The left hip is trying to move forward. Inhale the arms straight up towards the ceiling. Good. Now grab a hold of your left wrist. Take a big inhale. Lengthen out of the left side of the body. And as you exhale, side bend over towards the right. Imagine you are pouring that breath down into the left lung. Good, inhale both arms back up, release your wrist. As you exhale, bring your hands down, keep your back knee down and twist your right arm open to the sky. 
Can you feel your entire body breathing? Option to tuck your back toes and lift your back knee if you want. I'm going to stay here. Last breath. Slowly revolve it back down. If you have your back knee lifted, you're already there. If not, lift your back knee. Step your right foot back to meet your left. Find that really strong plank, plank pose. So lift through the sides of the waist, lengthen the tailbone, big inhale. As you exhale, either knees, chest, chin, or lower yourself halfway down for Chaturanga. As you inhale, baby cobra or upward facing dog. And as you exhale, hips up and back, downward facing dog. Did you remember to coat your movement with your breath? Okay, keeping our attention on neutrality, start to float that left leg up from the left inner thigh. So everything is on the midline. The right inner thigh, the left inner thigh are on the midline of the mat as you try to stretch the front of your yoga mat to the front of the rim. Now start to turn your left toes out towards the left and again measure the distance from your left toes to the left side of the room. Feel where your body is in space. Then bend your left knee, let it open up. Maybe lean your head back. Imagine you could touch your toe to the back of your skull or make circles or do whatever you want. You're listening for the voice of that inner teacher, which often doesn't speak in words. Good. And then re-neutralize everything back out. Imagine the inseam of your left leg getting longer and longer and longer. Big inhale. Begin your exhale. Start to shift forward. Curl your knee in towards your chest. Do a little bit of exhale. Step your foot between your hands, drop your back knee down, uncurl your toes. Already start scissoring the legs and use that energy to get more lift. It's like that energy of the scissoring wakes up the pelvic floor. We can lift up and out of it. Catch a hold of your right wrist, big inhale, and as you exhale, side bend over towards the left. Pouring that breath down through the right lung. On Friday, we did a lot of side bending. We're not going to do as much today. So enjoy this one. Good. Inhale, release. Release your wrist. Reach the fingertips for the sky. And as you exhale, right hand down, left arm spins up to the sky. Feel that width across your chest, but it's not just your chest. It's your back as well. It's your shoulder blades. Can you feel more width across your shoulder blades? More space in the back of your lungs for your breath. If you want to tuck that back toe under, lift your back knee up, go for it. Observe your breath. And then slowly revolve that left hand back down. Find your way back into a plank pose. And then take it through a vinyasa, whether that's knees, chest, chin, or straight back to downward facing dog. We all have unique vinyasas. And every day we practice, our vinyasa is even a little bit unique from our own practice. Good, so in, inhale your right leg up to the sky. And as you exhale, bring your right knee towards your right tricep, squeeze up there as high as you can. And then step your right foot to the outside of your right hand. Good. Lift up onto your fingertips and just pause here for a moment. Think about drawing your yoga mat backwards and reaching your chest forward. Yes. See if you can press your shoulder blades to lift your chest from the inside out. Good. And then you're going to step your left foot to the outside of your left hand and lower yourself down into Malasana. Good. And now on our inhale breath, we're gonna stand, rise all the way up, gather that energy all the way up above you, big inhale. And as you exhale, return back down to Malasana. Let's do that twice more, inhale, Rise all the way up as if you're gathering that energy. Gorgeous, you guys. And as you exhale, come all the way back down to Malasana. 
One more time. Scoop it up, gather it up, feel your pelvic floor lifting. Make sure you're staying aware and in control of how you move. Lowering back down on your exhale to Malasana. Place your fingertips down. Step your left foot to the back of the yoga mat. Place your palms down. Step your right foot to the back of the yoga mat and lift your hips up and back into downward facing dog. Inhale your left leg straight back behind you. As you exhale, slowly shift forward, knee towards the tricep, still exhaling. Step your foot to the outside of your hand. Pause here. So you're still going to scissor your legs. You're going to think about pulling your yoga mat backwards with your fingertips and lifting your heart from the inside out. Breathe. Good. Now step your right foot to the outside of your right hand and lower back down into Malasana. Good, and then let's do that same thing three more times. So what is your intention as you move mindfully, as you move this energy through your body? Can you let this be a practice that brings you deeper into yourself? One more time. Remember, begin the inhale. Still even inhaling, even when it feels like you get to the top. Beginning your exhale and returning all the way back down. Fingertips to the mat. Right foot steps back. Palms to the mat. Left foot steps back. Downward facing dog. See just how much you can lift up underneath that triangle of your body. Roll the uppermost part of your arms down towards the floor as you root down into the inner palms. And imagine the inner thighs traveling, traveling towards the back of the room. Mark where your inner thighs are and mark where the wall is in the back of the room. Good, and then walk your hands back towards your feet. And when you get there, bend your knees a little bit. Clasp your elbows, take a forward fold. And then start to engage your quadriceps as if you could lift your kneecaps up, lift your hips a little higher, descend the top of your skull down a little bit lower. Good. Notice which forearm you have crossed on top. Release your fingertips to the floor. Inhale, reach your chest forward. Good. Exhale, fold back in. Clasp your opposite forearm on top. And pull your forearms down towards the floor as you lift your quadriceps up. Imagine your knees had like suspenders and you could lift your kneecaps up. Not force them backwards, but lift them up. Fingertips to the floor. Inhale, lengthen your spine. Exhale, forward fold. Root to rise. Inhale, circle your arms, reach all the way up. And as you exhale, hands to your heart and think about what it is you are resolving internally and what it is that you are cultivating or alchemizing to release or provide to the world. And then step to the front of your yoga mat. Take a moment in Tadasana. Just imagine that you are on the precipice of this bright new horizon we're talking about and you can just see all of this possibility. Just feel what that feels like in your body. As you inhale, gather, scoop, rise up. Let your ribcage lift up off of your pelvis. As you exhale, fold forward, long spine. Inhale, lift your chest. As you exhale, step your left foot to the back of the yoga mat. You're going to keep your back knee lifted. Plug your right thigh bone into your hip socket as you spin your left inner thigh up towards the ceiling. And then imagine you could scissor the legs together and reach the arms forwards, palms facing one another. So as you think about plugging your joints, think about lengthening. So where do you feel that length in your spine? Take one more inhale. Gorgeous. As you exhale, hands come down, step it back. Coat every single movement with your 
your breath, however you choose to move through your unique vinyasa. Good, and then inhale your left leg straight back behind you. And as you exhale, shift forward, coating the entire movement with your breath. Step your foot between your hands. As you plug your left thigh bone into your hip socket, spin your right inner thigh up towards the ceiling. Scissor the legs towards one another. And then when you're ready, stretch your arms forward and feel that elongation. Breathe. Can you feel the plugging action? So we have those two counter actions. As much as we're plugging in, we're also reaching and elongating and using our breath. Gorgeous, so nice, Dory, beautiful. Slowly bring your fingertips down, step your right foot forward. Inhale, lift the chest. Exhale, fold it in. Inhale, circle, rise, gather, come alive, you guys. Exhale, hands to your heart. We use this to come alive, to feel aliveness in our body. Inhale, big circle. Your arms are alive. Your rib cage is stretching away from your pelvis. Begin your exhale. Fold forward. Still exhaling when you get there. Inhale, lift your chest. As you exhale, step your right foot to the back of the yoga mat. Same lunge we just did. Do all of the same actions. This is your chance to set it up for yourself. Eventually stretch those fingertips forward a little faster this time. As you exhale, hands come down, left foot steps back. Take it through your vinyasa, coating every single movement with breath. From your downward facing dog, inhale your right leg up to the sky. As you exhale, shift forward, curl the knee in towards the chest, step the foot. Do all of your actions, and when you're ready, Extend the arms forward, triceps turn down towards the earth, feeling that plugging as well as that extending. Good, fingertips come down, left foot steps forward towards the right. Inhale, lift the chest. Exhale, fold it in, big toes touching, heels slightly apart, bend your knees, circle your arms, Utkatasana chair pose. Imagine that your hips we're trying to sit down on that diagonal and you're trying to stretch your ribcage up out of your pelvis. Feel the lowest part of the belly engage as if you could pull those frontal hip points up towards your belly muscles. Take one more inhale. And as you exhale, stand up, palms come to your heart. Pause. Feel the energy, feel the breath. Feel if your heart rate is accelerated in any way. Mine is. Good, and then bend your knees, circle your arms, inhale, Utkatasana, exhale, fold forward and straighten the legs. As you inhale, lift the chest. As you exhale, bend the knees, root the palms, step back, your vinyasa, coating your movement with your breath. And finding your way back to downward facing dog. Inhale the right leg straight back behind you. And as you exhale, step your right foot next to your right thumb. Seal your left foot down on its edge so your left toes are facing the left front corner of your mat. And as you root down into the inner part of your left heel, you feel how you can steer that left inner thigh towards the back wall. Inhale and rise up to Vira Madrasana 1. So imagine plugging your right thigh bone into the hip socket. Feel your right sitting bone right underneath you and feel the pelvis, both sides of the front of the pelvis lifting up. Stretch the arms up to the sky as if you could lift your rib cage up out of your pelvis. Allow your palms to join as you look up. As you exhale, bring your hands down, take it through your vinyasa. Inhale your left leg straight back behind you. As you exhale, coat the movement with your breath. Step your left foot next to your left thumb. Seal the outer edge of your right foot down. Ground into the inner part of your right heel to steer that right inner thigh towards the back. 
and inhale, rise up to Bureau of Adrasana 1. Good. So you can imagine the right side of the ribcage trying to move forward, the left side of the ribcage trying to move back. Allow your palms to join as you continue to root into that inner part of your right heel. And as you exhale, bring your hands down, step back, and decide from not your mind, but from the voice of that, that inner teacher. Good, and then bend your knees, look forward, step walk or jump to the top of your mat. As you inhale, lift the chest. As you exhale, fold it in. Bend the knees, circle the arms. As you inhale, Utkatasana, coat your movement with your breath. As you exhale, root to rise, hands return to your heart, integrating internal and external. Again, bend your knees, circle your arms, Utkatasana. Exhale, fold forward, straighten the legs. Inhale, coat your movement with your breath, lift your chest. Exhale, take it back. Your vinyasa. It might just be straight to downward facing dog. That's fine. All right, you guys. Good. Inhale your right leg straight back behind you. Lift the undersides of the arms up. As you exhale, same thing. Step your right foot next to your right thumb. Seal your left foot down on its edge. As you inhale, rise up. Fear of a dress in a one. And then continue opening your arms as you heel toe your right foot towards the left a little bit. Bear of a draws in a two. Okay, so you feel the outer edge of that left foot pressing down. It's like you're trying to create more of an arch underneath your left foot. And I want you guys to play a little bit. I want you to let your knee kind of come forward, maybe even a little too much. And then think about pressing the lowest part of your shin backwards to straighten your leg. So it's just a different mentality. Think about sliding your knee forward. So you're just looking for that sweet spot. And then press the lowest part of your shin backwards. And then find the place where you can kind of stay. Elongate your left arm back behind you a little bit more, so much so that it takes your left waist with it. And then reach through your right arm so much that it feels like, again, you're broadening across the front and the back of the body. Good. Now lengthen through the right side of your body and then bring your hand down. You can grab a block, place it to the inside or the outside of your right ankle. And wherever you choose, you can also go forearm to thigh if you prefer that. Wherever you choose, if you have your hand down on a block, seal your elbow and your knee together. And then as you press into the inner part of your left heel, stretch your left arm over. So you're plugging your joints at the same time you're stretching and elongating. Revolve your chest up towards the ceiling. Allow the breath to pour in. Good, keep reaching through your left fingertips. Hand is on a block now. In the case you have your forearm on your thigh, put your hand on, on a block and start to press into the mound of your right big toe to straighten your right leg. You're still reaching your fingertips forward. Good. Now come to classical trikonasana. Take the left arm up to the sky. And as if your back left foot was a flipper, Imagine you could press your heel backwards a little bit more and lean back against an imaginary wall behind you as if you could open your chest up towards the ceiling. Breathe. Good. And then re-bend your right knee so that your knee stacks right on top of your ankle. And inhale back into Viravadrasana 2. So you can feel how your chest and your belly are facing the long edge of your yoga mat, even though your pelvis is facing the corner of your yoga mat. Take your left arm underneath your right arm, either give yourself another hug or take, um, what is this, Garudasana arms, eagle arms, floating the elbows up, moving the palms away from the forehead and feeling that space that you can breathe into in the back of your body.
good. Now listen carefully. You feel how your waist is facing the long edge of your yoga mat? Slowly start to revolve your waist forward. Eventually pivot to the ball of your back foot. Coming into crescent, maintaining your Garudasana arms. And then imagine the eagle is flying away. Inhale, circle your arms, reach all the way up to the sky. And as you exhale, you're going to take a twist. So you can either bring your palms together and twist your elbow across, or you can come back to that easier twist. I don't know if it's easier. It's just called easy twist. Or you can drop the back knee down. This is one more opportunity to explore. What are you releasing? What are you letting go of? Or what are you exploring? And then when you're ready, you find your way back through your vinyasa to downward facing dog. Deep breathing. A little bit more to get through. So inhale your left leg straight back behind you. As you exhale, cope the movement with your breath. Step your left foot next to your left thumb and seal the outer edge of your right foot down. Feel where you're grounding into on that back leg. Inhale. Rise up, Virabhadrasana 1. And then open it up, Virabhadrasana 2. Heel to the left foot over a little bit. Imagine someone was pulling your left wrist forward and pulling your right wrist back. And you were finding that center point. Mary, zip up the front of your pelvis a little bit more. There you go. And then firm your front ribs in so that you get longer. And then reach through that left arm, get that length. Oh, you know what I forgot to do? That plank thing. So move your left knee forward, and then think about pressing the center of your, or this, the lowest part of your left shin backward. And just do it a couple of times until you find your sweet spot. And think about how much you're really holding onto the mat with that back foot. Find your warrior two, find your dristi, and then elongate through that left arm, Find your block, place your block down, or bring your forearm to your thigh, and stretch that top arm all the way over your ear. Good, now scoot your left shoulder blade away from your ear and down your back, and then revolve open a little bit more. Good, and as you plug your joints, you reach, you elongate, you extend, you get really excited through the middle part of the body. Like we like to say, it's infinite, right? We can always find a tiny bit more length, even if it's just subtle or the suggestion. Start to press into the mount of your left big toe. Keep your left arm reaching as your left hip crease lengthens back. Feel those opposition. The left hip crease is getting deeper. The right fingertips keep reaching forward. The left waist keeps rolling under. Take the right arm up to the sky. Classical trikonasana. Again, scoot your left shoulder blade away from your ear and roll your chest open a little bit more. Make sure that your back foot is like that flipper trying to push the mat away. Can you get more space on the front of your body, across your chest and across your shoulder blades? Good, now re-bend your left knee so that your knee is on top of your ankle. Rise back up. Virabhadrasana 2. So we want to make sure we're talking about Virabhadrasana 2. We want to lift the front of the pelvis up as if we could take the tailbone a little bit heavier. Good. Now wrap your right arm underneath your left. Either give yourself a hug or take your Garudasana arms. Float the elbows up. Move the palms away from the face. And breathe into the back of the lungs as you continue to feel that opening through your left inner thigh. Good. Slowly start to turn your elbows, turn your waist, turn your chest, pivot onto the ball of your back foot. It is not easy to do that. Good. Once you're there, scissor the legs towards one another and allow your eagle to fly away. Inhale all the way up to the top. And as you exhale, your twist, whichever one you want to take. Stay 
present. Last breath. Slowly unravel. And make your way back, however you get there, to your downward facing dog. And then bend your knees, look forward, step walk or jump to the top of your mat. As you inhale, lift the chest. As you exhale, fold it in. Legs stay straight. As you inhale, circle your arms, reach up. Imagine your body was a needle and you could stretch that needle a little skinnier and a little taller. And as you exhale, bring your hands together in front of your heart. Good. So we're going to shift the weight onto the right foot. We're going to take tree pose on the right. We're going to play with it a little bit the same way we did a moment ago. So go ahead and place your left foot wherever you want to practice today. Make sure you're firming the right leg into the left foot and firming the left foot into the right leg. And then I want you to find your frontal hip points and notice that they're facing forward. Yeah, I like to kind of put my hands um, right on top of them. Now. Remember in the beginning where I was saying move your one knee until it moves your pelvis? That's exactly what we're going to do. So you're going to start to move your left knee out to the left until you feel your pelvis start to move. Okay? So we're just exploring the edge and ah, falling over too. And then come back to where you're neutral. And then start to push your knee out and notice where you can kind of find that, you can do it a couple times where you allow your pelvis to move, but then find that point in time where there's a sense of, your knee is as externally rotated as it can be, and your pelvis is still neutral. And when you feel like you have that, bring your palms together in front of your heart, stand up nice, tall, proud, and then extend your arms up in a victory sign, and share whatever it is you're sharing with the world. Imagine, just you are expressing it. Good, and then release. Let's go to the second side, shift the weight to you guys are staying up there, good job. Shift the weight to your left, place your foot wherever you're practicing. Sometimes my foot's really slippery for some reason. <laughs> so make sure your toes are pointing straight down your leg. Bring your hands to your hips and notice where your hip points are, right? Straight forward. Now start to move your right knee towards the right until your hips move. Oh, okay, we feel how that happens. Do that a couple of times. And then when you feel like you notice the place where that transition zone occurs, stop. And then just breathe your right knee open a little bit more. If possible, and it's very subtle. Bring your palms together to touch. Once you have it, and then open it up and share whatever you're sharing with the world. As if you could send it everywhere. Good, and then release. All right, we're almost there. Now we have our strap, okay? Some of you guys might not need the strap. We're gonna take Uttista Hasta Padukustasana 2. So that means we're going off to the side. So same thing like we just did. The strap has a loop in it. Um, if you're not using the strap, you can go into your arm to the inner thigh and catch your big toe. If you are using the strap, you can bring your leg out in front and then start to take your leg out to the side until you feel your hips move. And then bring your hips back so that they're square. And you can do that a couple of times. But then eventually you're gonna find that place where your hips are neutral and you really have externally rotated that left leg out as much as you can. And if that's the case, reach your right arm out to the right. Stand up nice and tall on the pillar of your right leg. And then if you're feeling particularly Stable and balanced, release your strap, take your arms up to the sky, feel the engagement of your quadricep, and release all the way down. Good. Second side, find your way, place the strap around your foot, take your leg out in front, left hand to the left front pelvis, and start to open that right leg up. So right now, you haven't allowed your pelvis to move. Keep taking your right leg out to the right until, oh, we start to steer a little bit, yeah? So notice that subtle movement, and then notice how you can play with it. When you're ready, left arm reaches out to the left. Left arm is expressive, yeah? Everything we do in yoga has, like, energy to it. And then if you want to 
Play with your balance. Let go of your strap, arms lift up, and release all the way down. Gorgeous, beautiful job, you guys. Big inhale, gather that breath inside of you. As you exhale, hinge, fold forward, long spine. Inhale, lift the chest. As you exhale, make your way back. Last vinyasa, of course, it's optional. They always are. Good. Lower your knees, come down, and roll over onto your back. All right, we made it. We made it all the way to Uchispa Pasta. So, just like we started, soles of the feet are down in front of you. Arms down by your sides. Feel the earth underneath you. Feel the movement of your breath. Feel the movement of the liquids of your body, the blood, the lymph. Feel that inner universe. And you know, when your breath comes in, it's like bringing the external and the inner universe to commingle together. So let's move by coating our movement with our breath. Begin your inhale. Start to lift your hips as you reach your arms back behind you. Dynamic bridge. Still inhaling a little at the top. Begin your exhale. Start to roll yourself all the way back down. The arms return to the floor. Still a little bit of an exhale when you land. Do that twice more. Choreographing your movement to the length and texture of each one of your breaths. Having this beautiful relationship, this beautiful dance with our life force. And then when you land, rest your hand on your heart, rest your hand on your belly. Allow yourself, yourself to be still and calm for a moment. Breathe into each one of your two hands. The hand that's on your heart, give it a little bit of feedback, a little bit of resistance so that you really feel your heart expanding into your hands. Take note of which hand is on your in, in, in uh, which hand landed on your heart and which hand landed on your belly. Good, and then reach your arms out to the sides again like how we started. Cross your right ankle over your left knee. And then curl your knee in towards your chest or thread the needle. If you wanted something more than thread the needle, you could wrap your forearms around your outer right shin and release your left leg down or stay with breath and you. Good, and then release your left leg down, uncross your ankle, extend your arms out to the sides again. Cross the left ankle over the right knee. Hug the right knee in towards the chest. Either stay here or graduate if you want. Graduating's not better. It just depends what that inner voice says. Good, and then release. Place the soles of both feet down on the mat. Extend your arms out to the sides again. Let your right knee start to fall to the right until it pulls your pelvis to the side and imagine you could get longer from left fingertips to right fingertips as you mark the distance from each one of your knees to the right side of the room. Good, on your inhale breath, lift your knees back to the center and as you exhale, let your knees, left knee falls to the left until it carries your pelvis with it carrying the right knee. Get more spacious across your chest, more spacious across the back of your body, and mark the distance from each one of your knees to the left side of the room. Good, 
and then inhale it back to center. And then as you exhale, hug your knees into your chest, lift your head and your shoulders away from the floor. Squeeze yourself into a tight little ball and see if you can engage every single muscle in your body, actually create tension. And as you exhale, release all of that tension. Just let it go. Let your body take up lots of space on your yoga mat. As you experience your physical body taking up space, keep your awareness on your internal body and think of the space that is inside. And in this un unobstructed space, our energy can more easily flow. So we can be more present to truth. We can actually have moved through some of the things we might be holding or avoiding so that we can bring our beautiful divine internal energy to the external world. So take a deep breath in and really allow your entire body to expand with that breath. And as you exhale, visualize a balloon deflating, and as it does, you become more unified with the earth, with our planet. And let the breath neutralize. Let the facial muscles soften. Create an absolute clear space where you can let your attention just rest for the next few moments. stillness that we build our reserves. Some people say Shavasana is the hardest pose because we just want to move on. But this is actually the most important pose. The whole practice leads to this moment. So really release, surrender into it just a little bit more. And then whenever you're ready, you slowly just embrace yourself again, just like how we started. Give yourself a hug. Whatever arm landed on top doesn't really matter. Imagine you could squeeze yourself and feel yourself breathing into your hands. Inhale your arms open again, and then as you exhale, give yourself another hug. This time the opposite arm on top, and really get a little snuggly, more snuggly with yourself. Feel yourself breathing. It's like when you snuggle up your Pet, and you're just like, hmm. Inhale your arms open again. This time as you exhale, hug your knees, hug yourself. Imagine all of this warmth, all of this intentionality that we can build within, we can share without, outside of ourselves. Roll over to your side or rock yourself to a seated position. If you still have that blanket and you'd like to sit up on it, go ahead and do so. And then just taking this last moment of our practice to set up a really tall, alert, energized spine. And to just marinate in this silence, this collective effort. Mark the space to the front the wall in front of you, the wall behind you, the wall to either side of you. Bring your hands together in front of your heart as if you were drawing all four of those directions together. And as much as you can, just kind of mark where you're sitting on this planet. And imagine you can move your awareness out three-dimensionally.
and then bring your awareness all the way back into your own heart and imagine that your third eye was gazing down into this vast beauty. And as you open your eyes, it's like you shine the light of your heart out through your eyes. Open your eyes. Namaste. So awesome job, everybody. Thank you so much for